I hear five dollars. I hear ten dollars. How much am I? Paying? I'll make it fifteen. Fifteen dollars, I hear. Twenty. Twenty dollars, I hear. I miss anything? Do I hear no, not a thing. Of course, when Aggie gets here and you two start bidding on those cutting horses, hope that woman doesn't start to force my hand. Why, you'll raise a bid. You know as well as I do that 90% of the people that came here came to watch you and Aggie bid against you. When Aggie starts bidding, she's so stubborn she wouldn't step out of the way of a prairie fire. You two are quite a bit alike. It's those four cutting horses from the Claxton stable she's after. They haven't brought them now, out yet. ladies and gentlemen. They have now. Take a look at these four magnificent beauties. Size them up and down here. Bring them right around here, gentlemen. That's the way. Get your bids ready, folks. Get your bids ready. Here they are, four magnificent animals. And now, how much am I bid for these four beautiful horses? $100. Surely, Mr. Lancer, you jest. Why, these horses are worth $500 at least, and you know it. Could it be that I heard you wrong? You heard me right, all right. They're not worth any more than that to me. $100 for the whole lot. That would smoke Aggie, huh? Do you ever figure how much you and Aggie cost each other? Bidding against yourselves the way you do? No, not really, but I suppose over the years it must be about 50-50. Are you people going to stand around like this and let Mr. Murdoch Lancer buy these horses for only $100? 110. Do I hear 120? 120. Do I hear 130? 130. I have 130 bid. Do I hear 140? Do I hear $140? $140. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, nice looking horses. Do I hear 150? I think so. Well, you steal at $150. Do I hear 150? You bidding or you talking? I'm bidding. 160. 160 bid. Do I hear 170? Do I hear 165? 165. Mister, as far as I'm concerned, you just bought yourself some horses. 160 once, 160 twice. Going, going, gone. You said you wanted those horses. Oh, I changed my mind. Look, why don't you keep bidding? He doesn't look like he can even afford it. Changed my mind. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Uh, look, why, um, there's nothing else worth bidding on. You two go by Jake's place and tell him we're gonna move that small herd through there in a couple of days, huh? But he knows we go through his place. Well, tell him anyway, Scott's just, you know, courtesy. What are you gonna do, stick around town? For a while, then I think I'll go by Aggie's place. She must be sick or something. All right, five dollars one. What are you doing? Well, it appears to me like we're building a fence. Across a public road? Not that I know of. I was told this was private property. Well, Lancer has been driving cattle through here for years, mister. Looks like you won't be able to do it no more. Unless they can uh, climb under this here fence. Scott! Johnny! Now, Jake, you know that Lancer drives the cattle through here in a few days. Now, why are you trying to build a fence across this road? I spoke to them about it. Also to these people. What do you mean? It's your land. Who do you have to speak to? No, it ain't, Johnny. Not no more. I I sold out. Jake, Lance has always had the right of way through this road. You know, I never went to school. But this here land, I sold it to Acme. Well, 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 it's Acme land again. That's the outfit I work for, mister. The head office told me there might be some argument about putting up this fence. Yeah, there's going to be more than just an argument, mister. Then you take it to Acme's lawyers. If they tell me to take down these posts, then I will. But until they tell me, let's not have no trouble. Yeah. You know, Acme, he pay me top dollar. And with my wife ailing and all. Sure, Jake. We understand. Let's go, Johnny. It's the fourth ranch in a row to sell out. 
Yeah, I guess that Acme firm is set on surrounding lands. They're buying up all the land. Oh, I'm gonna hate to tell Murdoch. Yeah, I know what you mean. Baggy sold out. Yeah, it's to be completely cut off. someplace there's no use hiding you better why murdoch how nice of you to stop by don't you put on that innocent act with me you sent a stranger to bid on those horses oh he isn't a stranger he works for me i thought he did rather well didn't you you knew i wanted to bid on those horses well why didn't you i call that a downright dirty trick murdoch lancer you had no more intention of buying those horses than you had of buying the moon you just wanted them to cost me a hundred dollars more than they did and you're mad because they didn't you didn't buy them, you stole them. And I think it was very clever of me. Now, are you just going to stand there and glower at me? Or would you like to sit down and have some lemonade? <laughs> oh, Murdoch, if you could have seen your face when you saw those horses. I was watching you from inside the door. Aggie. I never would have believed you could have played such a dirty trick. You knew how much I wanted those horses. Oh, Murdoch, if you really want them, I mean, if you need them, you know that I'll sell them to you for exactly what they cost me. Well, where would be the fun in that? <laughs> oh, you old bear. I just knew you wanted them to cost me more. <laughs> You take off the smug face, young lady, you know, there'll be another day. Too many other days. Murdoch, do you remember the day that I bought Henry this chair? Mm hmm We'd been married just three years. He always called it his judgment seat. Whenever I had some silly worry or needed the answer to a question, he'd say, well, let me sit down in the judgment seat and we'll talk it out. Aggie, you want to tell me what's on your mind? Will you sit down? In the judgment seat? Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with that telegram, I think, huh? Yes, it is. Aggie, are you gonna sell the ranch? Murdoch, don't you ever have anything on your mind except business? I'm getting married. Well, is it so startling that somebody asked? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Aggie, no, it's... Well, you know, you've come up on me sudden twice today. It's, uh, and I just didn't know there was anybody, that's all. Will you pass, please? Buck Addison. Are you saying that you disapprove? Oh, no, it's not that. It's just I am. Uh... Just what, Murdoch Lancer? Well, I, I didn't know you knew him that well, that's all. Well, I didn't until I went to San Francisco this last time. Oh, I'd known him off and on for years, you knew that. But I met him at this party my first night there, and uh, he asked me out for supper. And the next day there were roses in my hotel room. And then there was dining and dancing and champagne. Honestly, Murdoch, he swept me off my feet every night and day that I was there. 
I'm sounding like a giddy schoolgirl. <laughs> says in the wire here that he's going to be in Spanish Wells today. Well, he proposed my last night in San Francisco. I told him I had to have time to think. So he's coming here for his answer. And you know what the answer is going to be? Yes. I don't know Buck Addison well enough to judge him, but uh, he's not exactly the most popular man in all of California. Well, I know what they say, and I don't care. Robber, Baron, land grabber. And as for the newspapers, you know as well as I do that every newspaper in this part of the state is anti-railroad. Oh, Murdoch, he's not like that at all. He's kind and he's, and he's gentle and he's generous to a fault. And you're in love with him? Yes. Murdoch, you know how much I loved Henry. You were the happiest couple I ever knew. I would never do anything that would be disloyal to Henry's memory. But he's gone. And I'm alive. And I've got a right to live. Tell me that I'm not wrong, Murdoch. Please tell me. The night Henry died, I promised to look after you. I told him that. Well, I've done that as best I could. Given you advice when you've asked for it help you handle affairs here at the ranch. But, um, but Henry didn't mean for me to look into your heart. You're the only one that can do that. I wish your happiness. from this map, Mr. Addison, with the acquisition of the Jake Mendoza property... Did you get a reply from Lancer on that offer we made, or didn't you? He uh, turned us down. And make a higher offer. Mr. Addison, there are 100,000 acres in Lancer. Now, with the amount of property you've already bought, well, what I'm saying is, with the new railroad spur, you'll be in a position to set your own shipping rates. It might be prudent not to buy Lancer. All I've heard from you so far is a lot of talk. How are you making out? The road between Lancer and the Mendoza place was already fenced off. I also got a crew working on Wolf Creek Dam down at the Semple place. Now, why can't you talk that clearly? Well, Mr. Addison, sometimes I just don't understand you. Well, I'm not asking you to understand me. I'm telling you to buy Lancer. Now, if money won't knock Murdoch Lancer down to where you listen to reason, maybe Jake here can figure out a way that will. up like this was down in Texas, and one I predicted one whopper of a blue norther. Uh, how's things over on the East Range? Not so good, Jelly. We got about 12 dried out water holes, and those yeah. windmills haven't turned for months. Oh. We're gonna have to start moving those cattle over to Wolf Creek. Did you tell Jake Mendoza I was coming over to beat him in checkers? Those games are over, Jelly. Jake sold out to Acme Land. Why, the bunch of land grabbers. What are they trying to do, start a range war? Oh, come on, we're a long way from that. I'm not so sure. All we know is that someone's after Lancer, and whoever it is, they're not going to give up that easy. You sure you can handle this all right? Don't you worry, Mr. Addison. I was raised on a ranch. 
We know how to handle these kind of people. Well, I hope it's understood. I'd rather not have anybody hurt. You just leave everything to me, Mr. Addison. All right. Oh. <laughs> Who was that man? Uh, he works for me. Now, you know I haven't seen you in 15 minutes. I know. It's been far too long. It sure has. You know what I thought? What? Well, I thought that we might have supper home tonight mm -hmm. and, uh, and invite Murdoch Lance over. <clears throat> well, you've, uh, I mean, you talked me into going over to his place tomorrow for a barbecue. Uh, don't you think that's enough? <laughs> well, you say that you haven't seen me in 15 minutes. I haven't seen him in over a week. Well, is that so important to you? He's my closest friend. He's been coming here for supper once a week for the past ten years. Uh, honey, would you mind not inviting him this time? <laughs> Why? Well, we planned on having dinner alone. I mean, uh, just the two of us. Well, if he's around, uh, the two of you spend the whole night talking about a lot of people I, I've never even heard of. Buck Addison, are you saying that you're jealous of Murdoch Lancer? Well, if that means, am I in love with you? Yes. Win a rain last year. But he built a dam higher up. Probably around the old simple place. We've always had the water rights. I know. Why don't you go on back to the ranch and tell Murdoch? And bring some help. We gotta get these cattle moving further on. What about you? I'm gonna take a little ride upstream, see what I can find out. Ooh, I have a feeling that I ought to go with you. Look, these people know what they're doing. I promise you I won't get into trouble, all right? <laughs> I mean, that's probably what they'd like me to do anyway, right? That's far enough, you can do your talking from there. Look, I'm only checking the stream. Act me, land, don't do nothing unless it's legal. Now you cross that fence, you're trespassing, and my orders are to shoot. Is that the way you want it? Is that the way you want it? I ain't up here alone. Are you gonna make up your mind how you want it? We don't wanna see you get hurt. But unless you back off, some of my boys up here might get restless.
think in good sense. You want to take a chance on that, or you want to be a dead hero looking at a damned up prick you can't do nothing about? Isn't it a fabulous house, Mark? Very substantial. I just love it. Great. I guess it's really always been like a second home to me. Well, Aggie, I hope you'll go on feeling that way about it. Sorry we couldn't have arranged some better weather for you, Mr. Addison. It'll change. <laughs> you got a trick knee too, Mr. Addison? What was that? Jelly's our weather prop. He claims his knee always acts up when there's a change in the weather. I ain't just a claim, it's fact. Well, Jelly, if your knee can provide us with a little breeze, I'd be much obliged. Well, we can sure use it. Come on over here, you two. There's some people I want you to meet. Uh, you go, Agatha. There's several things I'd like to discuss with Mr. Lancer. It's all right with you. Sure it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm afraid Mr. Addison isn't enjoying himself. Oh, nonsense. It's just his way. It's quite shy, really. You know quite a lot about ranching, Mr. Addison. Well, I make it a point to... Find out everything there is to know about something that interests me. And by the way, that, uh, that latest offer you had on Lancer is a good one. I'd uh, accept it if I were you. You know about that? Yeah. Well, then I uh, guess you have some connection with Acme Land. I am Acme Land. I assumed as much. Well, you're wasting your time, Mr. Addison. Lancer's not for sale. Everything's for sale at the right price. I learned that the hard way. Ever had it disproved? Nope. How much, Lancer? I told you it's not for sale. Well, I think I can make something pretty good out of the Mendoza place now that I uh, have it fenced off. I hope that uh, didn't inconvenience you too much. It has, but it hasn't killed me, and it won't. Oh, by the way, I've uh, consulted some lawyers. I think I can get an injunction to force you to tear the fence down. You're a stubborn man, Lancer. I remember seven years ago when you went to the governor and tried to force me to build my railroad spur closer to your ranch. I still think I was right about that. Well, I didn't at the time. And so now those uh, chipping pens and loading chutes are 30 miles from here. I'll live with it. No, you missed the point. Your desire to have those pens and shoots closer to your ranch was selfish. And I'm not criticizing you for that. You were being a good businessman. My motive for building that spur where I did was also selfish. But times change, and now I find it to my benefit to just continue that spur and build a new one. Now, the new spur would terminate exactly three miles from the border of Lancer Ranch. You're not in the habit of making that big a move for nothing. You're right. Now, that spur will be a private line, on private property, with private capital. And I will decide who uses it and who doesn't. Are you threatening me? Those are your words, not mine. I'm merely trying to do business with you. I've driven my beef 30 miles for seven years. I guess I'll go on doing it. Well, you go right ahead. But you won't find any chutes or pens there because I'm tearing them down right now. Well, then I'll build new pens. Not on my property, you won't. Think it over. Papers are all drawn up whenever you want to sign them. What are you really after, Addison? Well, I think I made that clear. I'm after Lancer. The ranch or me personally? I told you that I learn everything there is to know about something that interests me. Agatha Conway has been almost totally dependent on you since her husband died. And she's going to be my wife. She doesn't need you anymore, and neither do I. There's only room for one bear to a mountain. And I want you out of the way.
That personal, huh? Just that personal. And in case you haven't heard, Wolf Creek is bone dry. I built a dam across it in the old Sempler place, which is also my property. So you're finished, Lancer. You're dead. It's just a question when you lie down and accept it. What if Aggie were ever to know about this? Well, I don't think you'd tell her. You stole all those years from her and never made a move. And you know I'm her one real chance for happiness. And I don't think you'd want her to lose that chance. You're too good a loser. Addison bought up every sack in town. But uh, Scott and I figured as long as we're going to Modesto, we could uh, pick up the grain. You're not going to Modesto. Not at the moment, at any rate. What do you mean? Couldn't get the loan. Apparently, Lancer is no longer a sound financial investment. What? That Jim Pierpoint? What's he think he's doing? Oh, it's not Jim's fault. He gets his orders from the main office in San Francisco. It all comes from the board of directors. They can't do that. Oh, they can, and they did. Buck Addison is the chairman of the board. Quite an opportunity I'm offering you, Jelly. You can make twice as much money working for me as you ever will here. Mr. Addison, I'm not a man that can be bought for money. Uh, you show me a man that can be, and I'll show you a man who's gonna die broke. What are you doing here, Addison? Uh, Lancer, boys? Well, I figured you had a few more hands who'd like to go to work for me for a price. Mr. Addison, why don't you, uh, get out of here? <laughs> hey, I'm gonna bust your face open if you don't get out of here. All right. Johnny, I'd have handled it. Murdoch, we'll all handle it, all right? All four of us. Just had a pretty good job offer. Don't think I didn't consider it. Just don't get any ideas I didn't consider it. Oh, I wouldn't do that, Jelly. <clears throat> no, sir, I'm a free man. Come and go as I please. Certainly right, Jelly. It's this uh, trick knee of mine's the trouble. See, it, it's affected by altitude. His camp's a uh, sight higher than this one. Oh, yeah, it must be almost oh, 10, 12 feet higher. Oh, just don't get the idea I'm nailed down to anyone. I'd never get that idea, Jelly. <laughs> A shale around here, Mr. Addison. I think we'd be better off about half a mile down the canyon where we could lay it right into granite. I'm not about to build an extra half mile of roadbed. Costs a lot less to take advantage of this fault right here. A sure thing, Mr. Addison. It's just that one good slide and this whole shebang had come down. I remember back in 63. Lane, and... I'm not interested in a history lesson. I'm building a railroad. You get your boys on a job and I want day and night crews until it's finished. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 
Hello, Aggie. Hello, Bert. Come on down. People are watching us, you know. Well, let them. You better get used to it, because there's going to be a lot more of it. Would you mind telling me why you start building railroads and tearing down mountains and changing the whole face of the earth without telling me anything about it? <laughs> Don't you let that concern you. That's a man's game. But there's one thing I can tell you. Mm -hmm. The house you've always admired? Mm -hmm. Well, it just might be yours. Fuck, half the time I don't even know what you're talking about. The Lancer House. The way you described that to me the other day, I could walk through the place blindfolded. Come on, I'll show you around. Buck. What, what was that about Lancer? Just what I said. I'm going to buy it for you. Of course, I'm having a few problems. I have to apply a little pressure, but he'll give in. Buck, Murdoch Lancer is my closest friend. I thought that you understood that. Well, I do. That's why I made him the offer I did. 5,000 more I'd offer anyone else. But don't you worry about it. You're going to have that house. Buck, I mean, Lancer's not a thing. Not, not some kind of bauble that you buy in a store. It's, it's a man's pride, his way of life. Aggie, I love you. I've never been in love before. Not like this. You don't need Murdoch Lancer anymore. Can't you understand that? I don't know, Buck. I don't know if I can. Not on your terms. back of my hand. Well, in an emergency, how many head of cattle could you drive through there in a day? Well, none. Why, those sand devils will spook the herd and churn them right back into your face. Now, I've always said, what you got to do is come straight through here and down to Jason City. Well, that's Aggie's land. Well, all you got to do is ask Aggie. Miss Conway, I mean. Well, now, you know she'd do it. She'd do it in a minute. Especially if you was to tell her how that Addison is chewing you up. Well, it ain't as if you was perfect strangers. Well, I mean, everybody's always saying how you and she was... Saying what? What were they saying, Johnny? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. What's a crazy old uh, mule skinner supposed to know anyway? Addison's got us. In which way you look. If we don't get Aggie's ranch, we're dead. Seems to me I heard that someplace else before. You think Aggie knows all the dirty tricks Addison's doing to get that ranch? I doubt it. And I don't think Buck Addison thinks they're dirty tricks, just business devices. Well, don't you think you ought to tell her? Johnny, I've been fighting my own battles a long time. I don't intend to stop now. You want to know what they're saying in town? Now, what are they saying in they're town? They're saying that she's marrying this fellow on the rebound because she couldn't get you. Don't go looking at me. That's what they say. Johnny, Aggie means more to me than I can say. I love her. I respect her. I want all of the good things for her. I wish I could say more, but I can't. 
Because I can't, I cannot make pronouncements about a man whom she loves and who could give her so much more. Can you understand that? Yeah, yeah, I can understand that, but I just wish the stakes weren't so high, that's all. So do I. Aggie. The very same. A little dusty, a little tired, but the very same Agatha Conway that you've known for these many years. May I have a cup of coffee? Sure. Well, I guess I'll go help the jelly count. Uh, whatever you sound. Thanks. You're working hard. Any problems? No, oh, just the usual. Did I ever tell you that at one point in my life, I used to have dreams about this place? Dreams? About living here. Sitting at this table. Belonging to all of you. Crazy, wild dreams. And after they were over, I'd fall asleep. Murdoch. What do you think of Buck? Tell me honestly. No, maybe you better not tell me honestly. Maybe you better just tell me what I want to hear. You really mean that? I don't know. Well, Aggie, you fell in love with certain qualities in a man. The man is still there. The qualities haven't changed. Now it's up to you. That's funny. He'd destroy you if he could. And you're defending him. Well, Aggie, we've been out here for a long time, you know. We forget there's another whole world beyond the borders of the Lancer and Conway ranches. Hard, doggy dog world. Buck Addison's world. Now, if we were suddenly thrown into that world, I think we'd find it difficult to adjust. You make it sound like trying to gentle some sort of wild creature. Well, maybe because that's the way it is. But there's a difference. I invited him into our world. There's no reason for him to behave like a wounded animal. Wounded animal? Perhaps that's the answer. Why are you protecting him? Maybe because I understand him better than you do. Aggie, you see, he fell in love with a woman, but he didn't know how deeply it went until he found out that there was another man in her life. But I told him all about you that there was really nothing between us. Nothing between us. Yes, but still, I can imagine it must be hard for a man like Buck Addison to accept that. What about you? Was it easy for you to accept Buck Addison? Maggie. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Let me tell you something about yourself. You're not the kind of a woman to fall head over heels in love with a man one day, forget all about it the next. Now you're still in love with him. How can you be so sure? I can't be sure. I doubt if any woman ever changed a man. You just grew to accept. Maybe that's what love is all about anyway. Murdoch, there's... There's a... Earthquake. Maggie, wait a minute. Oh, I gotta go. Walking his crew are working out at the trestle. Oh, oh, oh. Any doubt? 
doubts now, Aggie. About what? About where your heart is. Don't just stand there. Get Johnny and get saddled up. Looks like Jelly's knee is kicked up more trouble than bargaining. Wait, get back. Oh, Buck, are you all right? Yes, everything's fine. We just had a little shake and the boys got panicky, but they're back on the job now. I have to go over some charts, so why don't you go ahead and look around? Jim! and you're the luckiest man on the face of the earth, and you don't seem to realize it. Don't tell me what I realize and what I don't. Nothing's changed between you and me, Murdoch. Not one damn thing. So you're going to go on fighting? With pleasure. Well, in that case, let's get it down to a level that we both understand. <laughs> Agatha. you. If you don't stop insulting her the way you did today, I won't. <laughs>
road for a long time, I guess I can go on living with it. All right, you two, that's enough. Now get out of there or I'm coming in to get you. Just, you just remember, you have a whip me, Murdoch. Anytime you want to finish it, Buck. Anytime. All right, I signed a shipping contract with you. You can move your cattle over the new spur. At a rate based on current prices. Except for one thing. You have to drive those cattle three miles across Agatha's property. Buck? Yes, Aggie? And if you weren't a neighbor, I'd, uh, I'd be within my rights to charge you a toll. And neighbor or no neighbor, I'd be within my rights to refuse. Is there any chance of you two talking about anything else? Well, I don't know. Uh, let him think of something. Do you know anything about horses? Yeah, enough to get by. Why? I, uh... I was just thinking there's a horse auction over at Roger's place on uh, the beautiful stallion. Uh, no, you uh, wouldn't be interested. Well, how do you know I wouldn't? I might be. Buck, I think I ought to tell you. Were you going to say something, Aggie? Nothing. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, we don't need any horses, but uh, I might put in a token bid. Oh, that's all I was going to do. But I'm, I'm sorry I brought it up. It'd uh, just be a waste of time. Don't tell me what to do with my time. All right, then. Next Tuesday, Don Rogers' place, 4.30. A beautiful animal. Got Morgan blood in him. If you're there, Buck, I'll see you. Come on, boys. Bye. Buck. Yes? Come sit down over here. Watch out for that, Addison. I think he might be pretty sharp with those horse options. Yeah. Anytime he thinks he can outbid me. Anybody want to race back to the ranch? 